All right, so we'll start off by cloning the assignment. Now that I've got it cloned, I'll go and create a code space. Now that my code space has been created, I want to install the Azure Tools extension. And that's going to install these other um, extension packs as well. While that's going, let's check the version of Node. OK, that's correct, 20. Um, I'm going to hit Control-Shift-P and install the Azure Core tools. And the reason to do this is so that we can make sure that the code will work. I'm going to pick the v4. That's the latest version. While that's going, let's go to the portal and make sure that we have the, uh, the, the function set up to be able to deploy to it. I'm going to go to the portal, click Function App. I'll pick the function that I just created. And we did this in class yesterday. Go over to Settings and Configuration and see. make sure that that Publish setting is set to On. Now you can download the Publish profile. Now switch back. Now that the tools have been installed, we're going to create a new folder for uh, a v4 function. We're going to call this API 1 second try. CD into it and say func init. Tell it to use Node. That's the language which this one um, version will run, and JavaScript. Now that that's finished, uh, we can take a look at the files in the folder and create a new trigger function. So here there's lots available, but we're going to pick HTTP trigger. We can pick the default name or give it our own. And I'm going to call the new one that I create, hello. And if we look in the folder, there's a source folder. And inside there is the code for hello. You'll need to modify this to display the time for the first part of the assignment. Now let's start it, func start. Now, that if you see this green line where it says API slash hello, that means that it's successfully compiled and built and it's running. We click into uh, the browser, and we're going to type in slash API slash hello. Uh, and now we see hello world. OK, so that tells us that, that our HTTP trigger function is working. Now, uh, the next step is to check these files in. So I'll go into. Uh, VS Code, and on the left-hand side, there's the. It, it tells you what files have changed. I can click on plus to indicate that I want to check them in. And I want to do everything except for the package lock. Okay. Now, I've committed it, and I'm going to do a git push. So the reason we don't want to check in that package lock JSON is because uh, we're going to do an npm install as part of our GitHub action. So I've pushed it. Now the code should be in the repo. And there it is, API 1 slash second try. Now let's go create our action. Uh, so we're going to say new workflow. And here we're going to search for functions. Uh, I'm not using .NET. If I were, I would pick that first one. This one is Node, so I'm going to select the second one. Now, this comes pre-filled uh, out with a lot of things that are uh, common that we need to use. But one of the first things, before I forget, is to upload that published profile. So we go into Settings and create a new repository secret. Here, I'll give it a name. And then we'll copy the value from the from the published profile that was downloaded. I'll open it and um, we'll take a look at the, the files here. I'm going to copy it into the secret. Add it. 
it, notice the name gets uppercased. That's the name that I want to use in my GitHub action. So all the way at the bottom is where you specify that. Okay, now we need the name of the function, and that's needed for the action. And make sure that it's flex, uh, Linux and flex consumption. Uh, if you pick a different consumption, the, the settings will be, there are certain different changes that are needed for that. So here I'm customizing the name that's going to display when I deploy it. I'll, I put in my function name, and I also need to trigger this, set it so that it only triggers on the correct path. It needs to be indented just below branches. Oh, uh, yeah, I think it needs to be indented. Yep. And that red line goes away if it's properly formatted. Ah, so it needs to be paths. OK, now the red line goes away. And now the other thing is we want to be able to trigger it when we want when we click the button. So again, we'll use IntelliSense. Here it tells us, did you mean workflow run? This is actually wrong. Um, it's supposed to be workflow dispatch, uh, not workflow run. But the next thing we want to make sure is that we run on Linux. So Linux latest. This is also wrong. This should be Ubuntu latest, not Linux latest. When I made this video, I didn't uh, pay attention. Um, here, I want to make sure that uh, I'm just removing some some test cases, which I know that I don't have. You should build test cases, though. So here, I'm renaming the YAML file. OK, so now at the end of this, I can everything else looks good. I'm going to commit it. And if we go over to Actions, we see that our API one second try YAML is there. Oh, there's no button. And this is because the workflow dispatch was, we called it workflow run, and that's wrong. So um, we'll go back to the assignment uh, or the, the, the posting in uh, Piazza. And in here, is actually has the right, right words, workflow dispatch. When I was recording this video, I didn't actually remember. So now that I'm going back and doing the audio over, um, it's, it's hindsight is 2020. OK, so now we uh, go and trigger it. Lots of failed runs have happened since the time that I um, started doing this. Magically, some of those have disappeared now. Uh, now we can see that the, the Displash button is there. This. Um, this is this error was the very first run when what the YAML file was created. And we can definitely ignore that. So we trigger a run. And sometime later, um, there's been issues running. So one of the main things was um, that when we created a flex um, flex deployment, um, there are some additional parameters that you have to set up. And there's this nice little web page that tells you all the different ones. Um, I'd, and so for flex consumption, you need SKU and remote build. So we're going to add both of them. Here, SKU is going to be flex consumption. And then the other one is remote build. And we're going to set that to true. Now that that's saved, um, if you go back to the page, uh, it actually tells you for the different uh, different models, like consumption, flex consumption, elastic premium, all the other ones that are there, there are different parameters that you need uh, for those deployment types. OK, now that we've made those changes, we commit it. And we can see that the deploy has already kicked off. Or Sorry, we're going to kick off a deploy. Um, and 
here we're take, we're looking at it. So so far so good. And we see that it successfully deployed the package. Now if we go over to the portal, we can see, click into the function, we can see that there's that uh, hello world page or the welcome page. And now we need to put that API path. Um, so I scroll up in VS Code, and I can just copy it from there and put it at the end of the URL. And uh, here it says, hello world. OK, so that deployed. Um, if you go back to the function and the overview page, this will actually, if you can actually click into the function, the hello function, and you can see the source code here that was deployed um, 